What is up guys, Poison here, and before I get into this, this is going to be weird how I'm going to upload this video. This is going to be brought up on Thursday, today's Tuesday, I need to record it and edit it off my Evermedia Game Capture HD 2. I said the whole name, not as a promotion. But, for those of you who don't know, the Game Capture HD 2 actually has an editing feature on the, um, on the hardware itself. And if I were to plug it into a LAN connection like I'm going to, I could upload the video straight off the connection without ever having to use a computer. So I'm going to try to do that today. So that's why I'm just letting you know real quick. Hopefully this works out, but um, I've got, I just got back from uh, working. Um, if you don't know, I actually had work this weekend, you know. I worked from last Thursday to, or I worked from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Got back home on Monday at around 2 in the morning. Now, I made a video on Tuesday, or today that th I'm recording this. I made a video and uploaded it off my phone talking about, you know, work. Like, how I got back and stuff. And, um, we're here to talk about how work was. So, I may have lied last weekend. Not lied, I was misinformed. So, I thought I was going to go do security. That was not the fact at all. I wasn't there to do security. Sorry, I had to grab my power raid because I'm a little dehydrated. I was actually there to go do parking enforcement. Now you may be wondering, what's parking enforcement? Well, why is it so dark? Oh, that's right. All right, so I just remember last week I was playing in the living room and I turned down the brightness all the way down because it was hard to see. Now it's a lot easier to see. There we go. But yeah, so parking enforcement is basically, you know, I'm in the parking lot and I'm telling people, hey, sir, you know, follow me this way, park right here, you know, uh, if someone needs help getting into or out of a spot, I'll tell them, you know, go left, go right, you know, I guide them. Now, I wasn't working normal parking. I was actually working VIP platinum parking. Or, not VIP. There, okay, so the way it works is there's general admission, VIP, then there's platinum. Platinum people had money. Believe me, these platinum people had money. From what I heard, I'm not sure how correct this is, but apparently to park in platinum, it was $2,000 to park. Let that sink in. People having to pay $2,000 to park. So you can imagine what type of cars I saw. I saw about 20 Teslas in one day, a bunch of Porsches, a bunch of like Mercedes Benz, a bunch of BMWs, and not like cheap little BMWs either. I'm talking about like high class, like M3s, you know, SUVs, all types of cars. And I'm like, damn, these people had serious money. And give me one second. I should probably shouldn't have stopped. I probably should just pause. What the hell's going on here? Um, what the hell's going on here? Give me one second. I just got a comment. Oh, it's one of those fake comments. Okay. I know it's a fake comment because I got notified of a comment. And it, I, like, it's from someone like GTA or something like that. It was a fake comment from some fake GTA account. And I just, it's so fake that it got sent to my spam folder. But yeah, um, working parking and it was like, um, it was an easy day, honestly. Like Friday was, Friday and Saturday were the worst days, actually. Mainly because, you know, Friday and Saturday, we didn't have anything to do. There weren't that many cars Friday or Saturday. Sunday was the busiest day, but because it was busier, that means we had actual work. We didn't just stand around playing with our thumbs. We actually had stuff to do. You were killed by an enemy tank. Wow. So essentially, you know, Sunday, it's the busiest day. But because it was busy, they had us talking and walking around, which made me less tired. But Friday and Saturday, it's basically stand here... When a car comes, you know, that's when you have to help them, but there was, like, no cars. Um, Sunday, we packed the lot full of around 300 cars by 5 o'clock. Because that, like, the show was supposed to end at around, um, at around... The show was supposed to end at 10, and it did, but by, like, 4.30, 5 o'clock, we had all the lots, or every lot, uh, full. So, you could tell that it was basically busy. But, um... I met a few noticeable, a few notable, not noticeable, a few notable people, actually. Now, Saturday night, I met, um, well, Saturday and Sunday, but, you know, Saturday night, I ended up meeting Lars Ulrich, for, the drummer for Metallica, and Robert Chirillo, the bass player of Metallica, which was awesome. And then, um, then, oh, whatchamacallit, oh, sorry, I just keep burping, goddamn orange power raid. Then Sunday morning, I actually met Robert Chirillo again, except this time, he was here with his children, like, or with his son, and then, um, a few other kids. I found something out. Oh, fucking Mika, sorry guys. Um, 
Even though I was talking all weekend long, I'm not used to talking to, like, you know, a microphone. Um, plus, when I was talking, it was, like, short little bursts of talking, you know, like, Hey, how are you doing? Good morning. Hope you enjoyed the show. That's basically my talking all weekend. Uh, I'm not used to talking, like, for a maximum of, what, four minutes already? Um, but yeah, I met Robert Tarullo, and he had his son, and there was a few other kids here. Three or four of these kids, Robert Tarullo's son and the three other kids, were actually in a band called The Helmets. Now... Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see the helmets live like I was actually at work because they were the first band to start And I'm gonna keep pausing because I don't know how short this mission is, but I just want to talk so I'll pause it um, I was doing bottle rock. I'm not sure if I said that it was down in Napa. There were four stages and the main stage the huge one is called the jam seller stage and Robert Cirillo's son's band um, the helmets because that's their name So we're gonna keep calling them the helmets now they actually started up on the first main stage. They were playing on the main stage, the Jam Sellers one, and they started at 12.15 in the morning. So, by around 12.15, I, w you know, I wanted to go see them. I wanted to see what they were like. But at around 12.15 is actually when a bunch of band or a bunch of cars started showing up. So I'm like, shit, I can't go see them. But we were close enough to the stage that we were actually able to hear them, and they sounded amazing, honestly. And these kids were like 11 to 13, I believe, because when we were or when they were leaving, uh, this one guy I was with, Kenny, he started talking to one of the mom. She started talking to one of the moms of one of the kids, and she's like, "Oh yeah, we only have them. Uh, we only have them have like an Instagram, you know. We don't want them being exposed to like a bunch of bad stuff." And it's like, "Okay, yeah, that's understandable. They're only like you know 13 years old at most. You don't want them being exposed to all bad stuff." She's like, "Yeah, we only have a Instagram for them at the moment." Um. And I'm like, alright, that's pretty cool. So I started following them. They had, like, one footage from uh, the event this weekend. But seriously, they were an amazing band. Um, Only been playing for three years. I'm like, god damn, these guys are young. But it was, like, really cool meeting them. Like, sort of. I talked to them, but I wasn't, like... You know, I wasn't able to take a picture with them. But I was able to, you know, talk to them a little. I'm like, damn, that's pretty cool, you know? That they're so young, but they're already playing a huge festival on the main stage. And it was just really cool. Um, let's see, who else did I meet? So you met James Ulrich, Robert Chirillo, The Helmet. Um, I'm pretty sure there's other people I met. I just can't remember at the moment, though. But the weekend was really easy. The only bad part is I'm extremely sunburnt right now. But it's a sunburn that if you touch it, it won't hurt. But if you were to, like, smack me, it would burn. But, you know, I'm just all sunburnt, you know. Extremely tired, you know. I worked from... Friday, we worked from 7 to... To, uh, 7 to 12 Saturday was 8 to 12 and then Sunday was 9 to 12 so all in all I worked 30 hours but um, I can't tell you how much I make exactly because you know contract can't really ex talk about that but essentially I could tell you that I made basically what someone would work in a month to make minimum wage I made in 3 days and that was extremely nice you know this guy's gonna come up we can't stop him but yeah, I basically worked three days and made what someone would make in a month on minimum wage. So I'm like, hey, that's nice, you know. Hang in there, son, we're coming. Is this the TV thing? Yeah, okay. So I don't remember where I was with my uh, videos. Excuse me, I've got a drink of water as this plays out. And this isn't a cutscene, it's actually part of the game. A cutscene would be something totally different, but yeah, um, uh, what else is there to talk about from this weekend? Um, that was the good part about the weekend. Saturday wasn't something bad happened, so, um, we weren't security. None, no one in our group was security, like, we are security, you know, we have our guard cards and everything, but we weren't working security, we were all working parking enforcement. And that's what our whole company was, we were working with a company, uh, classic parking I don't know where the hat is I swear to god I just had their hat because I was cleaning up looking for my microphone and I don't know where I put their hat but it's something along the lines of like classic par or classic parking something something um shit I don't remember the name but yeah um yeah so I was part of that company for the weekend and I'm gonna be working for them more in the future too because you know it was a good pay and it was sort of easy the only bad part about the weekend was I was sunburnt and I wasn't physically fit to be standing on my feet all day but other than that easy weekend easy money sort of you know sir just come this way park here 
What's going on? Um. God, I wish I knew how long I was recording. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. So, I guess we're gonna keep up this video then. Um. We'll be right back, actually. So, on my phone, I have YouTube, and I, or I have a YouTube app, of course, and I have YouTube Studio, you know, because if you're, like, a YouTuber, you should have YouTube Studio. It gives you your analytics. It gives you all this. We're going to skip this. Um, yeah, it gives you an analytics of all your channel, and I need it because, you know, my computer isn't working, and I just got a fucking, I got a comment from GTA 6 videos. GTA 6 videos, if you're watching, just stop, honestly. Likely spam. He's underneath the likely spam. Good job on the video. I gave you a like. Mind watching my video? Okay. Here's the thing. We're gonna go back to Bottle Rock in a second. Here is the thing. <laughs> I forgot I was downloading games. Here's the thing. If you leave a link to any of your videos, if you leave a link to anything, actually, I'm gonna let you know right now. On my channel, if you leave a link to anything, it's instantly put as spam. Okay, that's just how I have my channel. Um... Yeah, that's just how I have my channel. Anything that's a link is automatically put into spam. Because I don't need links to stuff. But when you link me to another YouTube video, it's automatically put in spam. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. That's how I have my YouTube channel. You know, I don't need links to other videos in my channels. I don't need links to anything else. Unless I specifically ask you for a link, I don't need it. Okay? I'm sorry, that's extremely rude. I know. But that's just how I filter spam. Any links are automatically like put into spam. This person's obviously like one of those spam accounts where it's like, you know, if, here's the thing, anyone who leaves a comment on my video, I will automatically check out the channel, see if there are other content creators, but I'm not going to, you know, seek out people like, you know, actually I know where to stop this video, but, um, you know, I'm not automatically going to like, if you tell me to watch a video, I'm not going to watch a video, plain as that. Now I will watch a video if you just comment, and I'll be like, hey, let's go check out this guy's channel. First off, this guy's name is GTA 6 Videos. Automatic red flag. Automatic red flag. I don't like news channels unless they're specifically news. Like, you know, they state it. Like, ETC News, The No. I don't like video, like, channels, if you get what I mean. You know, I don't want... I don't like information channels about specific games. That's what I'm telling you. I don't like the Call of Duty channels that give you news. I don't like the... Assassin's Creed channel that give you news. The GTA channels that give you news. I don't like those channels at all. That's just me. That's extremely rude to say, but that's just me. Let's get off this topic. Let's go back to Bottle Rock. So, like I was saying, um, we weren't working security. But, um, there was a security problem. So, I was working with this woman named Katrina, who was part of our parking enforcement group. Now, um, Katrina had a daughter who came to work with her, but she was in a separate group, which was a bad idea. So, they put her in general admission parking, so, you know, general admission people are assholes. Honestly, like, they're going to be worse than, like, platinum people, you know? People with money. So, she was working general admission. Okay. That's pretty bad. But it was late at night. There was a group of eight drunken men, from what I'm hearing. There was a group of eight drunken men. And apparently, from what I heard, she apparently... One man grabbed her ass and was acting sexual with her. Okay, that's not right. Now, everyone kept calling her a little girl. I'm pretty sure she was 18, you know? I don't think they would allow someone underneath the age of 18 to work here. Maybe they could. I don't know. It was nothing bad. But she ended up grabbing, getting her ass grabbed. And, you know, some guy was acting sexual to her. So she ends up telling her mom around, like, 7 o'clock when it's already close to, like, us leaving. And then she's... The mom, I was with her at the moment because, like, I was told to go stand with her to help her with her job. Because she was at the front of the gate telling people where to park. And then one guy left. He's like, hey, I'm going to go back. Can you go just hang out with her for a little bit? Just help her if she needs anything. I'm like, yeah. So she's, she gets a call, She's and I don't remember exactly what the call was, but it was basically like, what's going on? Do you need someone there right now? I will send someone right now. And she pointed to me, and I'm like, she pointed to me, but she told me, like, wait. And I'm like, and then apparently the girl's like, no, 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 just wait till later today. I have to make sh like, she know who the guy was. But, um, later on in the day, uh, the guy's right there. Yeah, later on in the day, after we're done off work, um, the girl ended up coming to her mom, and she's like, hey. I know where the guys are right now. They're in the bar. They're drunk. There's eight of them, including the one guy who grabbed my ass. So the mom is like, okay, honey, you stay here. So her and my cousin, uh, Jaime, he ended up going with her and the main boss. 
and they left the file telling us. They just left, and we're like, okay, whatever. Um, but then I get a call from Jaime's friend. Uh, everyone calls him Dirty Bird. His name's Harold, but um, Dirty Bird is like everyone. He's like runs. Co he comes right to the car that me and two other guys are in, in our cousin Jaime's car. And he's like, hey, hey, guys, we gotta go, we gotta go. We're like, hella fucking shook up. He's like, we gotta go fast, we gotta leave right now. So we're like, okay, what's going on? He's all like, quick, we're taking Jaime's car. And he, uh, Damien, the other guy who was with us, or one of the other guys, it was Damien, Kenny, and me. And he's like, oh, Jaime took the keys, we can't go. And he's like, shit. So Dirty Bird goes back to his car. He ends up calling, um, he, there were like five girls sitting in the car. He tells them, hey, you guys gotta get out, you gotta go to Jaime's car. So, you know, they hop out of the car, we get in the car instantly, we roll, we're gone. We go down the street to where the bar is, which is actually a bowling alley, but there's a bar. We arrive in time to see Jaime, a guy named Mike, and a huge dude named Mario, and the boss and Katrina. And the boss asking him, he's like, hey, the boss basically, as we're getting up, he says, hey, so the trees, you were sexually abusing one of my girls? And the guy's all like, drunk, he's like, you've got the wrong guy, you know, essentially. And Mike's like, no, no, no. From what I heard, you sexually abused one of our girls. That's not right. And then he's like, how do you know it's me? So Katrina calls her daughter out from around the corner. And she's like, yeah, that's the guy. And his friends are inside. And he's all like, look, you got the wrong guy. Start walking away. And our boss, um, uh, fuck, his name wasn't Mike. Um, I think it was Barry. I'm, I don't remember his name. Shit, that's horrible. This dude was really cool, really calm. I actually did like working for him. And I plan on working for him. Ugh. I plan on working for him more, but he's all like, hey, no, no, no. He gets in front of him and stops him with his arm. And he's like, nope, no one's that you can leave yet. We still have questions for you. And then he's all like, I don't got to stay here to listen to this. And then he's all like, you know what? When you sexually abuse one of my girls, you do have to stand here and listen to this shit. And then, you know, at which point this guy's getting aggressive. And I noticed on his belt, he has like a multi-tool. And I know multi-tools have like little knives on them. So I'm like, okay. I'm watching him, like, you know, if this dude is to go for his multi-tool, I'm gonna grab him, pick him up, and body slam him from behind, because, you know, I might get in trouble, but I don't want the boss getting stabbed, you know. I might get some jail time, I might get fined, but I know that the boss will see that I actually stood up and did something, and might hire me more in the future. Or might not hire me, because I might have a criminal record. The good news is, the guy never went for his knife, so I never had to do anything. But, yeah, he's talking to him, and, um... The dude starts getting aggressive. He's like, you know what? I don't got to fucking stand here and do this shit. You're not the fucking boss. You're not the police. You're not a security guard. And then he's like, no, I'm not. I'm not the cop. I'm not a security guard. But you know what? You're messing with one of our family. We are not going to stand around and let you just do this. At which point, this dude starts getting more aggressive than Jaime Mario, who I'm six foot. And I had to look up to this guy. He's probably like six, five, six, six. He's between six, four to six, six tall dude fucking big he looks like he'd be a football player honestly but yeah he's behind him he's just standing over him mike is around him and then like a bunch of more of uh, the um parking enforcement guys who were with just surround him and then he's all and then mike says calmly he's like sir look around you're surrounded by a bunch of her family i wouldn't try anything and the guys are like yeah well i got friends inside so what so then it's like sir it's not the same our family will stand up. It's 20 against 8. And then he's all like... He's like drunk. And like seriously. 20 guys are surrounding him. And like... If this dude were doing anything. I'm pretty sure everyone would swing on him. But like... This dude is drunk. And Mike... Or not Mike. Um, I, I seriously want to say this guy's name is Barry. Honestly. That's what I want to say. But um... We're going to call him Barry for the story. Alright. I seriously need to remember his name. Barry's all like... Alright. We got all we need. Your seven friends are inside, drunk. It's time for you to go. So the guy stumbles off, and, you know, he just walks away. He Off into the darkness, we don't see him anymore. At which point, we hear the loud bang from inside the bar. So everyone rushes inside, except for me and a guy named Damien. I don't know why Damien didn't go. I just knew that I'm 19. I can't walk into a bar. If I were to walk into said bar, and a problem were to occur, and the cops were to come and arrest us, they would notice I'm underage, and they would fuck me over hard. Because, you know, I'm underage in a bar where there's a fight happening. So, I'm like, I can't walk in there, you know. But then, um, apparently shit's getting loud. And then, the owner of the bar tells everyone to leave. Like, all the security guys is like, you guys need to get out. We don't need you here. Starts yelling at everyone. So, all, like, the parking guys, which, they're not really security. But the parking guys all come out. And the actual security guard that was there, 
major fucking bitch. He didn't want to do anything. Like, he was like... He looked Hawaiian, but he was small as all hell. He was a little bit big, like, uh, you know, big weight-wise, but not big, like, height-wise. And, like, this kid looked, like, so, like, you could push him, he wouldn't do anything. And then he's like, oh, I can't get involved, you know, uh, there's nothing I could do, and, you know. It's like, dude, you're working security for this company where these guys were fucking with a little girl. And you're just like, I can't do anything. It's like, no, 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 no. That's a major bitch move. It's like, we don't work security, and we were about to go do something, yet you're out here not even caring. And, like, a bunch of guys were mad at him, because, like, seriously, it was known that these guys touched her, and then, you know, he didn't do anything. He was too much of a bitch to do anything. So he's like, oh, I can't do anything. You know, it's not my job. It's like, you are a security guard. It's like, you know what you should be doing? You should be in there right now, and you should be stopping us. Seriously. It's like, you're out here being a little bitch, essentially. You're supposed to be in there. I'm not saying defend us or defend them, but you should at least be telling us to leave instead of being out here around the corner where no one can see you. And it's like, come on, dude. Quit being a little bitch. You're a security guard. It's like, if you want, give me the uniform. I'll pull out my guard card right now, and I'll be a better security than you are. You know, I've only done security for two days, but you know what? I wouldn't be a little bitch. And it's, the guy's just like, hmm... I don't know the right way to label him, like, just bitch is the correct way I could label him, it's like, he didn't want to do anything, he looked like the kid you would push around, and wouldn't do anything, you know, he would just take it, but yeah, that essentially happened, and then, you know, um, the guy walks off, we're told to leave, we all leave, the boss is telling us, hey guys, thank you so much for being here, you know, that really helped out, you know, I was like, alright, it was all good, how'd I get hurt, what the hell? But yeah, that was Saturday. Sunday, um, you know, nothing really major happened. We never heard about the drunk guys anymore. From what I heard, I don't know who did this. But Saturday night when we were leaving at like midnight, um, apparently the drunk dude who walked away was fucking thrown over a bridge. Like, not a huge bridge, but, um, like we were out in Napa in the country and there's like a little, like, I don't know what you'll call it. Like, not, it's not a bridge, but you know, like, not a canal, like, there's a little water bed running underneath the main road, so, you know, it's like a little overpass. Apparently, the cops and fire trucks were there, because the dude got thrown down there. Because, like, we, the next day when we went in, we asked the, um, main boss, Barry, we're like, um, we asked him, hey, uh, why was there a bunch of cops here last night? They're like, yeah, you remember that drunk dude from the night before? He was fucking thrown down there. The cops had to go help him out. He was drunk and just fucked up. He was thrown down there. No one knows by who, and I'm like, fuck, dude. It's like, you know what? He he was fucking around with a girl. I don't care if she's, you know, 21 or whatever. You shouldn't be grabbing girls' asses. You shouldn't be grabbing anyone's asses. You shouldn't be sexual with someone in public. You know, end the story. If they don't consent, they don't consent. Oh, I thought that was an enemy. So, you know, he was thrown down there, fucked up. Apparently, I had to get rushed to the hospital. I'm just like, damn. You know, that dude was an asshole, but that was just fucked up. You know, he was clearly, he was really intoxicated, you could clearly tell. But the fact that, you know, he was, like, thrown down there, it's like, dude, he was drunk, he could have been thrown down there, and he could have fucking fell into a waterbed and, you know, like, drowned, but, yeah, he was just rushed to the hospital, I don't know what happened to him, but it was like, I guess you get what you get, honestly. And the woman, Katrina, the mama, the daughter who was sexually abused, she, like, at the end of the night, she's like, guys, seriously, Thank you for being out here, but none of you should have fucking been here, honestly. We didn't need to resort to violence, we didn't need to do anything like that. We just needed to see who it was and what he did. So, she was like, thank you guys, but seriously, this didn't have to be like this. You just had to, we just had to see who it was. And then, um, yeah, it's just mannequins. And then, um, from what my sister was telling me, apparently, um, I don't know how true the story is. I hope it's not true. There was a white van apparently going around trying to kidnap people. She told me that she was... Someone tried kidnapping her. But she's all like, oh yeah. Two people were kidnapped. And they believe... Like it was a boy and a girl. And they're like, yeah. The guy might be dead. Because they haven't heard from him to this day. And this was Saturday night that he was kidnapped. And they're like, yeah. They're afraid he's dead. And I'm like, do you know who it was? They're like, no. We have no details. We just know that there's a guy missing. And we don't know where the fuck he is. So, people are worried he might be dead. I seriously hope he's not. You know, even though I didn't know him, I don't wish for death upon anyone. But it's like, 
Yeah, he might be dead. And I'm just thinking like, fuck, dude. And here's the thing. After fucking Saturday night, I carried my knife on me. Now, if you don't know, actually, I've never shown it off. So you guys don't know, actually. I have a Smith & Wesson, um, this is just the name of it, a Smith & Wesson Border Guard knife. Now, the knife all the way with the blade to the handle, probably six to seven inches long, honestly. It's as big as my hand and a little bit past. So it's a big knife. Like, let's see. You see the orange bar in the middle of your screen? Actually, no, that's a horrible thing. Never mind, that's not going to work. It's like a six to seven inch knife altogether. And I had that shit on me. And I'm like, dude. And I was talking to my mom yesterday. I'm like, hey, I'm not saying I'm a badass. I'm not saying I'm a warrior. But I'm just saying if someone tried kidnapping me, I may not live. But you know what? I'm definitely going to make sure they don't come out of it the same way. Like, you know, that's how I live my life. I'm not saying I'll beat someone to death. But I'm just saying, like, you know, if you're going to try to harm me, you're not going to leave the same way you entered. You're going to leave fucked up. I may not make it out alive, but you're definitely going to be messed up. But it was just, like, an interesting weekend. Like, saw a lot of nice cars, honestly. Like, I saw high-end Porsches and stuff. And it's like, these cars were nice, but the car that grabbed my attention the most was a Volvo S60. Now, if you guys don't know, I love a Volvo S60. Those are my favorite cars. I'm going to buy one, actually, pretty soon. I think today, actually, is the day I'm going to go buy one. Uh, Tuesday, so you know, I might have one Thursday. But, um, yeah, I saw a Volvo S60 and I was in love. And I spent like five minutes talking with the owner. You know, I was talking with the owner. And, like, I was asking him questions. I'm like, hey, how do you like the car? And she's like, well, it's not my car, it's my daughter's car, but I truly do love it. It's a nice little car, it's affordable. And she's like, yeah, these things are built like tanks. I'm like, I do know they're built like tanks, that's why I want one. She's like, it's a great car, I truly do love it. I'm like, that's great to hear, honestly. So I fell in love with the car. I'm like, oh my god, this is beautiful. And we're going to end it here because I don't know how long it's been. But guys, seriously, um, if I have anything more to talk about, I'll talk about it in tomorrow's episode. So until then, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Have an awesome day. Bye.